All right, well, one nation we're hearing about more and more in the news these days is Turkey, of course, in relation to its invasion into Syria and its attacks on our allies in the region, the Kurds. But we hear very little about what it's like inside Turkey. Our next guest knows all too well and not in a positive sense. Pastor Andrew Brunson was held prisoner in Turkey for two years. He went from that, though, to spending this past weekend with President Donald Trump. Pastor Brunson joins me now. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So, Pastor, what was the uh, what were the circumstances surrounding you being imprisoned in the first place? I remember, I seem to recall, they accused you of being a CIA officer, an intelligence operative for the United States, correct? Well, I was accused of supporting uh, terror groups, of being a military spy, and also helping to plan an attempted coup in 2016. Of course, that is not true. We. My wife and I were there for 23 years before I was arrested, uh, just working in churches and telling people about Jesus. So you were known, you were known in the Christian community there. It was clear you weren't an intelligence operative. What changed? What made the Erdogan regime all of a sudden uh, demonize you, really, and send out the, their police, their intelligence people to pick you up? Well, there, there are two sides to this story, and one I call the human side, and one is the God side. So if we look at the Erdogan regime, yes, they took me. I think they saw an opportunity to uh, intimidate other missionaries and also church leaders in Turkey. And uh, then they used me as leverage to try to gain concessions from the U.S. government. But behind all of this political intrigue, I think there's another story, what I call the God story, and that's that while I was sitting weak and broken in a Turkish prison cell, God was doing something very powerful around the world, raising up millions and millions of Christians who started to pray for me. And I became a magnet of prayer for, for Turkey. And just a tsunami of prayer poured into Turkey because of my imprisonment. How were you treated by the Turkish authorities? Well, the prison guards treated me as they would any other prisoner or any other terrorist. Uh, I was always held with people who were accused of terrorism. Uh, the Turkish authorities, well, obviously they held me without cause, knowing that I was innocent for two years. So I say the Turkish government stole two years of my life, but God redeemed them and did some very good things with those years. Well, I'll agree with you there. Your, your story certainly galvanized the world, I think religiously, politically, because people saw it as unjust. People understood that you and your family, as you say, had been there two decades. They understood what was happening here. But was it Erdogan... Uh, as, a, as a Muslim? Was it Erdogan wanting a secular society? Was it Erdogan being anti-Christian? What do you feel was his, his main, uh, the, the driving force, the main driving force behind this? Well, I think that uh, when they first took me, they really were going to just deport me. They were getting rid of uh, people who had especially worked with, with refugees, which we had done. But then it turned into an attempt to intimidate, as I said, other missionaries, try to get them to self-deport. Uh, because they had never held a missionary in prison before. And, of course, I think there was also an attempt to intimidate uh, Turkish believers because you could see it this way. If we can do this to an American, we can do it to anybody. Right. So it's Makes something sense. that put fear into other believers. So did you have contact with your attorneys? What's their system like? Were you able to have contact with your family, with your attorneys? How did you learn that the U.S. government, especially the Trump administration, was putting pressure on Turkey to have you released? Was it through an attorney, news coverage? What was your contact with the outside world? Well, my wife eventually was allowed to visit me on a regular basis. Once a week, we'd have about 35 minutes through reinforced glass and speaking on a phone. And so she would tell me of the different efforts that were going on. And President Trump uh, became involved in, a, in an unusual way, uh, more than one could expect. And he had a number of phone calls with uh, President Erdogan. And there was a lot of pressure that he put on, his administration did, and also in Congress. Uh, surprisingly, uh, by the way, uh, he asked for my release. I see a, a picture of President Trump and President Erdogan at a summit. And President Trump asked for my release three times at that meeting uh, while President Erdogan sat in that yellow chair. And about 17 months after that summit, uh, I was in the Oval Office the day after I was convicted in Turkey of terrorism and then released and sent back to the States. And I sat in that same chair and it felt like a real vindication.
I'm sure, I'm sure it did. I, I, uh, the story is still remarkable. So now we have a geopolitical crisis, really, as it pertains to Turkey. We have Turkey now moving into Syria. They're attacking Kurdish strongholds. A lot of passions being inflamed in the United States. It's about whether or not that was the right decision. But Turkey is a NATO ally. So legally, legally, the United States, unless Congress makes a move, legally we can engage in military conflict against Turkey. Knowing what you know about Turkey, living in that country 23 years, being imprisoned there for two years, would you like to see the NATO nations, now apparently it has to be unanimous consent, including Turkey, to push Turkey out of NATO. But if there were another mechanism where the other NATO nations could make it so unpleasant for Turkey to remain in that they self-extricate, would you like to see that? Do you think Turkey should no longer be a part of NATO? What I, what I can say is that I think that Turkey is moving away from its Western alliances and they're heading in, a, in the opposite direction right now. So obviously that has many implications. All right, fair enough. I, and I understand that you're a man of God. You don't want to get into the geopolitical aspects of this. So let me ask you this in a different way. Do you think Turkey is an enemy of the United States, if not an enemy, an adversary, at the very least at this point? I would say that right now it is not a partner. And do you think it's moving toward the path of being more than that in a negative sense? I think it's moving away from the West, and uh, the direction is not good right now. And uh, yeah. we will see the results of that. So tell me about your weekend and about the minute we have left, your weekend spent with President Trump. Well, I had an opportunity to pray for him, and uh, I'm always glad to do that. I would pray for any president, obviously, if you had the chance, and, and all Christians should. But I am so grateful to President Trump. I owe him a great debt. And we pray for him regularly as a family. So it was, I was glad to have that opportunity again. Pastor Andrew Brunson, really glad to see you back here in the States safe and sound. God bless. Thank you. God bless you. You just watch Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for breaking news and give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, then share it with your friends. Remember, you can watch Newsmax TV live on YouTube. Newsmax TV, real news for real people.